Greetings, greetings, and welcome to a Friday episode of Vigram's Chance. I am doing very, very good. Of course, as I step onto the server, it becomes nighttime. Uh, we're going to take a quick break this episode from the blood magic thing. I'm still making a whole bunch of slates. I'm still trying to upgrade that thing totally to... Uh, Self-sacrifice. Did I actually? I can't remember been a couple of days since i've logged in last specifically because i've been so busy with other projects um let's check in real quick well first thing you can see i've got all of this upper part has been swapped out with self-sacrifice runes all up through here and then the bottom part i'm starting to get them swapped out but i'm not quite there yet um i can't remember yeah i'm totally out of <laughs> tier two slates but what i did make i found some time to actually get a ritual of the feathered knife it's actually got a switch up here it's currently on which means it's actually disabling this is an inverse state if the lever's on the ritual is off right so um i had to put this up here because it's just large enough of a ritual that it will anywhere that i put it inside the roof it actually impacts these right here. So um, I would have to redesign the roof just a little bit. And I don't want it to look different from the actual mechanism tower. So I might have to alter the roof design here and then also do it at that dome there. We'll have to see though. Um, let's get this out real quick. I'll just show you. Oh, uh, actually we need that in our inventory also. So this is a tier four altar, of course. It's been heavily modified. Now the default value that this gives you when you self-sacrifice is 200 LP, right? If we do this, we get 800 right now on one shot, 800 blood. Now here's the thing that I'm discovering is kind of the downside of the ritual of feathered knife and I'm probably gonna take it off. Specifically, the ritual of feathered knife only gives you 100 LP as a base, not 200. And 20 LP is deducted for the running of the ritual while it's going, which means you're only getting a base of 80 LP every time it tags you instead of 200 base. And it does respect um, sigils, I mean, uh, runes of uh, self-sacrifice, these things, runes of self-sacrifice, it does respect them. However, that thing is just high enough. It checks 16 blocks up and 16 blocks down. I'm pretty sure that's within 16 blocks, but I'm actually not sure if it's seeing the entire altar and all of the runes of self-sacrifice. So I think what I'm going to have to do is get this and move it if I keep it under the floor. It's also slightly too big to be under here because of the shape of our altar. Uh, our altar is a little chubbier than normal, so uh, it has more under here <laughs> than an, an altar normally would. So where a normal ritual would fit under a normal altar, our quad altar is proving some design choice problems. What I might do though, instead, whoop, let's go up, is put it right here. Maybe I can get it to where it's just under this side and it'll be close enough that it'll see as much of the altar as possible, but I'm not sure. Option number two is like I said, redesign the top of this dome a little bit to give us some more freedom on the inside and then redesign the mechanism one to match. So, um, yeah, we have, let's see if I can do 800, 1600. Also, you'll notice, no, bloop, 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 bloop. I have updated the actual resource pack that I use. I have a resource pack that I use. The Silent E, the Project E pack. It's actually made by a friend of mine named Mall Rat, and it removes all the tool sounds. Well, I put a... Um, a sound file in there that's basically a zero length sound file. It makes no sound called P E heal project E heal all one word P E heal. I put it in there and uh, that cancels out the healing noise that all the uh, live stones make. So I can actually do that on stream without having to, I mean on record uh, without having to edit out the sounds a whole bunch every time I do that, because basically what I've been having to do is dumb down the noise if you look right here, um, normally I keep this higher, probably about 30%. A lot of times I either dumb it down to 5% when I'm doing some blood altar stuff, or 
I edit it out in post-production now. I don't have to do that. So very nice. Um, so we can, with 10 shots, go to 8,000. It only takes about 13 clicks, right clicks, to go from empty to full. That was 13. Let's see if I can position myself here. We do. Yeah, you see, I'm only getting 760 here because not all of the altar in the lower sections has any. So I get more over there than I do over here. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of weird. That's quirky. Uh, see, I'm getting more over here above 820 because I have more rich uh, runes over here. Uh, so I'm hoping we can clear a thousand. Uh, it would be nice to go take the altar from empty to full in 10 clicks or less. That would be cool. Uh, that would make it a lot easier for doing the circle when we're actually doing big batches of slates. Um, anyway, that's enough about blood magic. We've done a whole bunch of blood magic. I'm going to take a break this episode and we're going to delve into, I'm just going to put that there. Uh, I have a million LP now. It's topped out. The network is capped. <laughs> If you'll notice in my first slot, um, I do not have my normal Obsidian Paxel. I have an Atomic Disassembler. Atomic Disassembler is one of my absolute favorite day-to-day -day use tools because with a shift right click, I can change the speed of it, which means when I'm trying to, trying to do precision building and precision breaking of blocks, I can slow it down and I don't have to worry about accidentally killing an entire section the floor. See? It's nice. It's easy. If I want to, shift right click fast. Uh, okay. That was quick. <laughs> um, uh, that's fast. It has a vein miner setting. Right click vein. And uh, in general, it is a fabulous... I'll just put it on a normal 20. It's a good speed. Um, actually... But oh, slow, just in case. Uh, okay, so what's going on in here? I have actually gotten started on the boring basic stuff on mechanism and to a certain extent, the Coke ovens from immersive engineering. Now, I don't need to make a blast furnace because I don't need to make steel. I can make steel with this thing. Plus, I can make steel with EMC, but that's not the point. Um, this thing lets me make steel a little bit easier than the actual Coke ovens do. Um, so I mean, uh, the blast furnaces, so I've just been using Coke ovens. I've got two Coke ovens, uh, 384, uh, coal Coke here. Let's get, um, coal. I'm going to do one, two stacks, put one stack in there, one stack in there. These are pulling out into this jungle, uh, or this, uh, storage drawer. It's got an emerald up upgrade on it. Uh, it'll do 416 stacks. I don't know how many items that is. Um, but if you go down here, there's actually pipes in the ceiling. There's one under that Coke oven and one under this Coke oven. They combine to make this pressurized fluid pipe that comes all the way down here. I have 143 buckets of creosote that we're going to be using for various things. Uh, let's see, this is the sludge coming out of the farms, all of the actual harvesters. And this is the um, fuel drum with a whole bunch of uh, 1.7 million uh, uh, millibuckets. Yeah, or uh, uh, 1, 000, about 1,800 buckets of fuel. This is given to me by Shadow Star WD. Very, very nice. <clears throat> so this is very quickly becoming a fuel depot, and we can fit a lot of stuff in here thanks to the Bedrockium drums. I really do like those things because they're ultra compact. So we're going to be able to make a lot of stuff with those. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to get into. Uh, well, actually, okay, first, there is a logistics pipe system running under this floor. I have a remote connection to the main network. So this connects to all the rest of the stuff. I also have that hooked up. So now cold coke, I can actually grab it from anywhere that I may need it. There's cold coke right there. Uh, that is, oh yeah, this is, wait a minute, let's get all of that request. That is Railcraft Coal Coke. I want to get that and put it in this one so as not to confuse things. 
But first, there's something I want to do. I need to get my wrench out. Get this. I have the LP system hooking up to this modular storage. And I have in here a mod-based item sink. This is going to be my storage uh, medium for everything from mechanism, immersive engineering, and railcraft. All of it is going to go right here, and it's going to be provided out to the rest of the network that way. So I will have, there we go, more cold coke. It gets converted from the railcraft kind to the um, immersive engineering kind. In here, I've got all of my various parts and things right at my fingertip to be usable. Um, I've got the new treated wood planks from Immersive Engineering. That's what this is right here is uh, at Immersive is Immersive Engineering. Uh, we have wooden crate storage systems and a lot of stuff I want to do. Like one thing I want to do is make a workbench, but we need to actually get some more treated wood. Let's get a stack of lumber, stack of jungle wood, because we have a lot of that. And I'm going to convert all of this stuff so much planks. I really wish I could shift right click and do a whole stack, but that's not a thing with logistics pipes. And it, I still think it's kind of dumb that it's not. Okay. Now over here, I actually think I have creosote. Yeah. See, I have bottles of creosote. Um, let's get, that is railcraft stuff I found in a chest. By the way, if you highlight something and do control A, a viewer sent me this tip in a, in a, a while ago in, a, in a, a comment. If you do control A while highlighting an item, you see if I highlight this, let's clear this all the way out. That's one right now, okay? Concrete. If I do control A, it automatically updates this number down here to all of what you have of that, which is great. It's awesome. So... Um, let's clear this out. I'm going to put that there. I don't know if this is going to work. It should work. Yep. We got some more glass bottles. We're going to empty out. We're using them that way. Now I'm actually going to get, um, whoops, other way. 16 bottles of creosote. And it's right there at our fingertips. Get that. We're going to get more of this treated wood. Let's sort that back into the main system. I'm actually going to leave this here for the time being. I have an engineer's hammer that I made from immersive engineering specifically so that I could try and um, uh, set up those Coke ovens. So yeah, now what I need to do is I'm going to make, oh, I don't know, a little over half a stack of those. Uh, what is the fence? Okay, so I'm going to need, let's do some treated sticks. I'm just going to do a whole stack of, there we go, a whole stack of wood. Let's get all of this stuff, whoops, and put it in here. Nice and set up. We're going to do a crafting table. And then we are actually going to come up here to the engineer's workbench. This is an important component. Let's hit the differential button. You are missing treated wood vents. Oh, right. Hang on a sec. Um, let's get one of those. Super quick response times on that because it's so close. It's one of the reasons why I decided to set up the storage system this way. Um, we can hit differential. Just get the slabs. We got this. We can put it down. Oh, dear. Yep, right there. That is... Oh, yeah, that's for later projects. Okay. So now I get this, and it has a home in here also. We can clear that out. This is going to be very, very important long-term. We're upgrading a lot of things. Now, there's one thing I would love to make on this actual observatory. I think it would be really cool... Um, to have platforms, little platforms right here in the middle, that there was an opening in the glass and a little platform that just opened up into the sky, almost like a little balcony with no railing. Then actually have the sky hook system that you can actually use the uh, steel cabling for. Where's the sky hook? Where's the sky hook? Let's see if we can find this thing. Hang on a sec. Um, 
I seem to remember what it looked like. I'm not seeing it right now. Wow. Breaker switch. That's called a knife switch for anybody that's curious. There it is. Yes. The engineer's skyhook, a new form of travel. I want to make one of these things. And uh, let's go in here. How much steel do we actually have in the system? Steel. I have a lot of there's Yeah, I have a lot of steel ingots that I've actually made. Um, so if we... Let's just do skyhook and keep the search simple for right now. Come on, NEI. There we go. It's a little, a little slow today. I'm going to request. I really hate this. Absolutely hate this. Let's try that one. No, I, I do have copper. It does not automatically pick. Oh, God. See, I have to look up and then match visually which one is. And it's just the dumbest thing. I really hate the fact that there's no. Is that the one I've got? It really should have. And see, the window disappears and I can't move this one. I think I've done that one before. There we go. I finally guessed it. Let's get one of those. I need to make some of this uh, set up for uh, auto crafting. Uh, how many sticks do I have? I have a lot of sticks. Okay. So we can go over here. I'm going to get one of these. I think it's that one. And then let's do another one. We're going to request two of those. You see that copper comes across pretty quick. And now. Oh, let's just go with that one and see what happens. Three stealing it's requested. I'll be able to make a sky hook. What I think would be really cool. Actually, I'm going to put my wrench away. Is being able to have cables, these steel cables. Basically, this thing you hook onto a steel cable and you soar the course of that cable to wherever it comes out, whatever, wherever it stops. You can even use it for power cables if you want to. What I think would be cool is have a little thing. It's almost like a balcony and um, it swings down to the garden tower and then maybe around, whoa, around to the other garden tower and then back to the other. So you could basically sky hook around the base. I think that would be really fun. So I want to start setting that up. I want to start getting the parts together for that design. Too well, let's go upstairs real quick. Um, if I wanted to, I could have them over here. Like just have a little thing that steps off and you right click on the sky hook and you go sailing around. I could do a, a pit stop right there and then cross connect it to the walkway up on the other side. So I could actually completely avoid this middle area and just we go for a scenic tour around the base. I think that would be awesome. That sounds fun to me, but um, I'm not sure what the exact dynamics of the system are yet. I think immersive engineering, there's a book. I need to make, there it is. Let's make, you are missing one book and one lever. Okay. You know what? Yep. Yeah. I hear lawnmowers in the distance. There's one book. There is one lever. I swear I have some of that stuff in storage somewhere. Let's do that. And let's read up real quick. I wish there was a way to make this bigger. Let's see. Um, not going to be overviews, I don't think. Basic wiring, no. Tools and simple machines. Let's see. The jerry can. Fluid transportation. Oh, here we go. Engineer Skyhook. Okay. The Engineer Skyhook is a motorized grabber system designed to hook onto wires, hemp ropes, or steel cables. With it, engineers can travel quickly the length of the power line to move between substations or other installations. 
Simply hold the right mouse button while close to a connector and you will attach to the wire. Releasing the button at any time or sneaking will cause you to dismount. You cannot start in the middle of a wire. You must attach at a connector. So what we actually have to do, let's put that up there real quick. We have to look at all these different steel wall mount and a structural cable connector. I think we could actually make some of those. Um, we have to make some steel fencing though. Yeah, structural cable connector. Steel rods, okay. Um, I'm actually gonna do a whole bunch of those. A whole bunch, I say. Um, and then we come back to... As many of those as we can. See, the steel one defaults to Railcraft initially, I think. And um, I wish it defaulted to the uh, the ore dictionary thing in logistics pipes. I wish it de I wish it defaulted to the one that I've already got. It's very aggravating to have to sit there and choose which flavor of iron ingot, I mean of copper ingot, because they're all the same copper. It's all ore dictionary. Why can't it just use ore dict? It, it doesn't make sense. So um, I w really want to get that sorted out at some point. So now I'm going to make, let me see. Actually, this makes eight of these things. I'm going to do one. And I'll bet you this is going to be enough to sustain us. Now what I actually need to make is copper. No. Steel cabling. And there is HB wire coil, hemp rope, steel cable coil. Here we go. I'm actually going to do that because I think let's do that again. I'm going to need a lot more steel. I'm probably need to automate something to make steel. Um, let's get this, get this, get this. So in theory, if I, let's see right here. We come over here. And you know what? I'm just going to put it right on the side of the tree. If we right click that to there and that uses one per, oh no, that doesn't. Maybe it did. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe steel cable goes farther. Do I have to be, does it have to, Whoopsie, there we go. Okay, so if I go up here, let go, and we have this tree over here, we're going to put one right there. We're going to put one right here. I'm not sure what this is going to do, but now... Yep, so I'm going to have to actually make, let's think about this real quick. I think um, it's actually pretty sparing on the wiring. Okay, I th think I know what I want to do. If I remember right. There are, oh gosh, where are they? That's it right there. Wooden post. Do I have any of that? Can I request treated wooden vents? Okay. That might be all of my sticks. I'm not sure. Let's request that. See, it's defaulting to a kind of a, a, a stone brick I don't have. And can I do... Oh, differential. And it's going to bring that stone brick over. Do that. And... 
and want to make three of these things. I'm hoping the actual connectors will work on this. I'm not sure, but if I can make this work, I'm going to be a real happy camper. Okay. So, um, I'm going to put this right here. That modeling is a little weird. Okay. So now what I can actually do, come over here. I'm going to put one right like that. I'm not sure why these are not showing. And we're going to link this over to this, which means now I just hold down right click and ta-da! Awesome! That is cool. Now I'm going to make another one of these things. Very cool. I'm actually going to go do that real quick. Let's make one last one, and this is going to be our fun project for the day. I'm really getting into uh, some of the cool stuff that's in immersive engineering. Let's do that. I don't have a lot of those left. Wow, I need to make more. And so now what we can actually do is we just walk up here, hold down the right mouse button, and we get put out right here. Uh, we can... Uh, put that there. We get this and put this down here. Link that. So now I'm near the Mage's Tower. I can go all the way over here. Get off. Right click. And this is complete whimsy. There is no point to this. This is not about optimization. This is not about the fastest route. This is about cool. And I think that's actually very, very neat. I could completely bypass. If I wanted to, I could do lines that go from here over to the walkway. I could go down to the lower levels. There's all sorts of great stuff I could actually see about this. This is going to be fun. I cannot wait to get some more of these things around the base. Uh, next episode, I actually want to start looking into getting some of the bigger machines built. What this means is I'm going to start making some auto crafters. Let's go back into storage real quick. Um, I have been using a little bit of the space at the back end. You know, I've got this as a reserve for storage drawers, storage drawers, storage drawers. But this back here, I've specifically set up all of these to be auto crafting towers basically like this one just makes a wooden gear this makes a stone gear this makes a furnace very standard stuff steel casing for mechanism iron gears that actually makes the energy tablet for mechanism it doesn't work either um but i want to make more of those going up and we can make a lot of these standard stuff like how to make treated wood treated sticks i'm going to put all of it into the actual auto crafters so next episode we're going to set up i'll show you how i got all this set up we're going to get all of it working. I'm going to set up auto crafting for specifically all of the stuff that we actually use in immersive engineering, which means we can just request parts. Uh, we can do a whole recipe and request it and it will figure it all out. It's going to be glorious. I will catch you folks later. Have a great weekend. Have a good Friday. Bye-bye.